I grew up racing sailboats with my father on the Raritan Bay. He always had a project boat in the yard, an old wooden one that my brother and I would have great seafaring adventures in. Inside the house, my dad dreamed his own dreams while he built scale model ships of wood, painstakingly glued and fastened with tiny brass nails. My first step into the Dolphin Club was a time machine. Here were the life-size models of my childhood, the detailed woodwork, the metal fastenings hand-hammered, the lap straight planks, thwarts, gunnels, burden boards, sanded, then varnished to a high gloss, molded into a functional piece of art. The tale of these craft is centuries old. John, the custodian of this fleet, is like a patient father when he tells me the history of my heart. This was an active, busy port, and these were the sorts of boats that went back and forth, back and forth, you know, taking passengers, taking cargo, going out to ships with pilots and bringing them into the, you know, into the waters. That was the service of the vessel. Seaworthy and refined. They've been around uh, 320 years. I mean, it's a long historical, almost industrial evolution uh, with an aesthetic spin to it. Uh, and I like the way the boats go through the water. I mean, I, I, I find the physical exercise restorative. It, it, uh, it, uh, it seems to be something adapted over time to actually work really well with the human body, propelling cargo, the vessel weight, uh, through the water. That's what I like about the boats. The boats are a physical connection to the past, my own, and when the craft were a workhorse, a trade until they were replaced with steam engines and ferries, right around when the sliding seat was born, for racing, for Ivy League rowers. John tells me about the first ones that came here to the U.S., about the rowboats Sir Francis Drake probably used when he landed here, and the migration of it from England to Boston and New York harbors, and then westward with the settlers. It always strikes me as a bit of romantic history. A beautiful time machine. I think John feels some of that too, but he's a steady hand, a firm fixture measuring information, almost mathematically in his way. Uh, these boats are designed to be built from trees. I need green wood. Literally, the sooner it's cut from the tree and put in the steam box and bent to shape, the better. I, I have been able to locate that and establish relationships with landowners so that their trees can be harvested uh, incrementally and, uh, you know, maintaining the aesthetic of the grove wherever it's growing and being sensitive to the needs of the landowner. And usually they're very uh, generous with the trees that are growing on their property and they're happy to, to uh, uh, provide it. The, most recently uh, I've been harvesting wood in, uh, up in the Sacramento River area where black locust was introduced. I've gone to uh, Port Townsend to get uh, fine quality old growth spruce to uh, winnow out one pair of oars at a time as needed. The wood is a search, but the result is longevity. While John was completing his master's thesis project, a 35-foot schooner that he lives aboard today, 
there was a movement to abandon the aging wooden boats and bring in a new fleet of fiberglass ones. John arrived at a near perfect time to begin an era of care and restoration that is a cornerstone of a warm volunteer community which defines Tuesday evenings at the Dolphin Club. I, I sense the historical significance of that effort to maintain this fleet so that the working relationship of these boats and these waters and the occupation that we have here for these boats at the Dolphin Club can continue. And so when I put one of them back together, which was the Dino Landucci, the first one I, um, the first one I repaired, I, I, I took the drawing of it, I took the shape of it, and then was able to uh, reproduce it. And the reception by the rowers at the Dolphin Club was tremendous. They, they really were able to compare what was available commercially in fiberglass to what was historically uh, offered in this hull farm in wood. It's truly remarkable that it has survived again and again and again. There's something to this hull farm that engages people, gets them out on the water, brings them back safe. And you don't have to be a collegiate rower. You don't have to be tall or you don't have to be male or anything else to row them. It, they're welcoming. I think that great societies are made of great communities and great communities are made of great love. To me, the beauty and effort and warmth of and between the rowboats and its caretakers is a rare and precious thing. A magic gem that each person who touches it takes a piece of it with them forever. <laughs>